essentially what happened was we had kids from this scheme throwing bottles and fighting over the road with people who lived in those flats over mm -hmm. there. This is the Easter House estate, although no one living here would call it that. They'd say they live in Well House. We're out with local MP David Linden, who's knocking on doors, canvassing. I'm calling back the SNP, we're just going to be straw poll, basically asking folk how you're planning to vote in the elections next month. Yeah, SNP, that's fine, that's no bother. The only other question we're asking is if you think Scotland should be independent or not. Aye. Aye, okay, that's fine. I'll leave you a wee card, I'll put my card through the door, Mr Blackwood, okay? Thanks very much, pal. Cheers. The challenges that we still have here would be about things like unemployment. The unemployment rate here is double that of the UK national average. Um, poor life expectancy as well. And there's still people that are dying routinely mm. in their 50s. You know, my, my father passed away in November last year, age 52. Um, so there is a kind of an inbuilt thing where the, the, you know, the diet and the lifestyle here is pretty poor. Mm. Um, but in terms of kind of violence and stuff like that, I think we've, we've managed to get a fair hold on it. When Labour decided to side with the Tories and campaign for a no vote, mm. um, and you know we were finding going around communities like this, where you know this was a solid Labour community. I mean, the SNP literally we were chased out here mm. like 15, 20 years ago. Um, whereas now. You know, we hold the Scottish Parliament seat, we hold the Westminster seat, you know, we've got all the councillors. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of it was just a complacency thing with Labour, but ultimately they found themselves completely on the wrong side of the debate when it came to independence. Mm. Um, that's the key factor. Yeah. You know, if you're, a, if you're a working class person in Glasgow and you voted yes, why on earth would you vote for the Labour Party again mm. if they sided with the Tories? So that's the, I guess that's the problem there. Hello, hi. So I'm coming on behalf of the SNP for the election next month. Mm -hmm. We're just doing a wee voter survey, basically asking people how do you think they might vote in the election. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you've made your mind up about that at all. Labour, that's mm -hmm. fine. And then the only other question we're asking people is if you think Scotland should be an independent country or not. No. Essentially what happened was we had kids from this scheme throwing bottles and fighting over the road with people who lived in those flats over mm -hmm. there. Um, so there's a, a kind of huge amount of intervention done to try and, and kind of deal with kind of the violence and the kind of the gangs. Mm. Um, and as a result, you know whether it's kind of taking young guys to go and play football at night. Because essentially, essentially what the, the kind of the authorities did is they took a big money bus full of the, the kind of the hardest young guys, took them out to play football, and got them so tired on a Friday night that a they were playing football with each other, and b they were so tired at the end of it they, they weren't really able to fight. Really um, and so now, I mean, like, like when I was younger growing up here, you, you know, if you drove along Edinburgh Road, it would not be uncommon to see people kind of launching bottles and stuff at each other. Now yeah. you can drive along there, that's not a bother, there's nothing. Yeah. Um, so so that there's, was, there's that a lot of work done to try and counter the kind yeah. of gang violence. And that, and that was people from rival gangs? Yeah, uh -huh. playing yeah. I mean, this, so this is a community with only, I mean, there's only about, I don't know, 800 people or something live in this community. Mm -hmm. Uh, Berlin and Calvi maybe a bit, a bit bigger than that, but I mean these are kind of fairly small communities, but they had their own kind of gangs and they'd be fighting across Edinburgh Road. So is it as much about these these kids had nothing to do? They were um, left behind. They weren't being taken care of. I mean, what, why was it they were sort of, in your eyes, what was driving them towards that violence? I mean, there was, I think there was certainly a, an expectation. That, I mean, so gang violence was something that played Glasgow for years. You go back to the Teddy Boys and all that kind of stuff, people going down to Glasgow Green and fighting with razors. So I think there was a kind of cyclical or, or generational thing that, you know, people kind of felt that, you know, somebody in their family had been part of a gang and therefore they might want to be part of a gang. So I don't think it's, it's necessarily about, you know, there's, there's nothing for them to do because even if there was nothing for people to do, there's no excuse for kind of lobbing bottles of Buckfast over the road to, to people in, in violence. Yeah. Um, but I think there was almost a kind of culture of, you know, being part of a gang or something that you just did when so you were in your teens. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's been a huge amount of intervention to try and kind of break that kind of stuff down. And then, you know, we're talking there about uh, the hiding of the asylum seekers that have, yeah. you know, have come to Glasgow. And then I feel like that ties into people's fears or othering of that group of people, particularly when the council isn't providing enough temporary accommodation to take care of homeless people, I know homeless people particularly as well, actually I think I saw suffering with HIV as well. It seems like there's a real problem with homelessness. Yeah, so there's a couple of issues at play there. Um, one is drugs. Um, so we've got huge kind of drug policy uh, issues that we need to deal with. The council, the health board, the Scottish government's all in favour of having a safe injecting facility. Um, you know, we understand that there are people who are going to inject heroin, um, and the evidence base shows that if we provide somewhere a safe injecting facility for them to do that, and it cuts down the number of overdoses um, and some of the infection issues that have certainly increased recently. Then you may want to the housing issue. There's no doubt that things like Tory austerity has increased the number of people who are losing their homes. Um, and so you don't have to take a walk down the city centre and speak to somebody who's homeless and find out the kind of background as to how they got there and whether it's benefit changes, universal credit, things like that. 
that has led to problems uh, with homelessness and I don't think anybody can deny that that is an issue that we need to kind of grapple with.